Welcome to Tactics Tuesday, where I rank FM22 tactics based on strict criteria to determine which is the best tactic available to play with and which one you should be using for your football manager save. The premise itself is pretty simple. I'm going to be basing my ranking on five criteria. The team's actual finish in their league versus their predicted finish at the start of the season. The number of goals scored. The number of chances created. The number of goals conceded. And the number of clean sheets kept. Down in the description below, I will leave some details about how I'm scoring each of these criteria so you can see exactly how I come to these ratings. And if you have a tactic that you want to see me use in one of these videos, pop down into the comments or send me a message on Twitter. For now though, let's have a look at today's tactic, which is Seven's Klopp Diola 4-3-3 positive. The tactic itself is a pretty simple 4-3-3, but what makes this tactic is both the player roles and all the instructions across the tactic. If you want to have a more detailed look at all of these, then you can either pause the video and add them onto your tactic screen, or if you just want to download this from Steam and chuck it onto your Football Manager save, then the direct link is also down in the description. So first of all, let's have a look at these bits over here. We can see it is a positive mentality. In possession, you've got all these lovely bits. It's a fairly wide attacking width, passing into space, overlap on both sides and playing out of defense short passing directness with a higher tempo low crosses in the final third running at the fence and be more expressive when we're in transition we're going to be counter pressing counter when possession has been lost we're never ever going to distribute over the opposition defense or to the target men, so no long balls in this and we're just going to get the goalkeeper to take short kicks when he is relaunching an attack and when we're out of possession, we are going to be pressing much higher line of engagement, a higher defensive line, just a standard defensive width with a more often trigger press and preventing short goalkeeper distribution, hence making their goalkeeper pump it forward and hopefully we can regain possession quickly in terms of the instructions for individual positions then if we just have a look at these if you haven't done this before the ones that are in the darker green are the ones that are just part of the role so for a wing back on attack and these ones in the brighter green that have the little remove bit next to them are the ones that we have added so starting at the goalkeeper position we've got a sweeper keeper on the fence we're telling him to take fewer risks and ease off tackles. A wing back on attack, telling him to take more risks and sit narrower. We've then got two ball playing defenders with no additional instructions. Another wing back on attack on the other side. Once again, shoot less often and sit narrower. A defensive midfielder to cover that back four, taking more risk and closing down more. So pressing, which is a big part of this tactic. In front of him, we've got a box to box midfielder on support. Dribbling less, move into channels, tackle harder and move tighter. He's next to a Mizala on attack. We've got lots of instruction for him. Dribble less as well, shoot less often, tackle harder and mark tighter. So again, pressing even though it is a more attacking midfielder. On the left hand side, an inverted winger on support. Cross aiming to centre to that advance forward. Getting further forward, tackling harder and marking tighter. On the right hand side, another inverted winger on support. Much the same sort of stuff, but more direct passes, tackle harder and mark tighter, so a bit less crossing for him. And then an advance forward with more direct passes and mark tighter. We can kind of see with this, although we're going short passing, we want to get that ball penetrated into the opposition third as quickly as possible forever our advance forward is to put the ball in the back of the net and based on all of this for this simulation we're going to be using five different teams and simulating through the 2022-23 season i've tried to go for some sort of blend of top mid table and lower league teams as well as a mix of foreign and english based teams first up then we have wolves wolves are normally around the higher end of the mid table and this season in the premier league they are predicted to finish seventh 
So it'll be interesting to see if this tactic allows them to do any better and break into the top six or even the top four. Next up is RB Leipzig, who are at least a top four team in Germany, who could even be challenging for the title, but obviously will have to overcome Bayern Munich. This season, they're predicted to finish third. Over to France now and Lyon, once a powerhouse of French football, winning seven league titles in a row between 2002 and 2008. And eight, but now definitely second best behind PSG. According to Football Manager, they're expected to finish in fourth place this season. Real Madrid are our Spanish team recent Champions League winners. They're expected to finish first. So this tactic's really just to test how much it allows them to batter the rest of the Spanish teams. And finally, back to England with Plymouth Argyle, who missed out on the playoffs last season and are also local to me. So why not use them? They're still down in League One and are expected to finish 12th this season hopefully this tactic can help them maybe get promoted with all these teams i will be touching absolutely nothing i've assigned all my responsibilities to members of staff as well as making each respective team's current managers in real life the assistant managers in game meaning they will take control of the team's matches in my absence and with that in mind it's time for me to go on a season-long holiday while we simulate forward and see how all five teams get on with this tactic see you in a second Ah, so we've been on our season long holiday and well, I've got the sunglasses for it. So let's head over to Spain first. Real Madrid have performed pretty much as expected by winning the league, but they haven't necessarily done as well in other competitions. The Champions League, in fact, they were knocked out in the group stages and then they didn't get much further in the Europa League either. So let's have a look at their statistics in the league, which is what we'll be focusing on. They finished top of the goal charts with 88 goals scored which come from 162 chances created, only just behind Barcelona. Defensively, Madrid are the best team in the league by some margin, only conceding 16 goals throughout the campaign. For context, the second team in this chart are Valencia with 22 goals. This results in 24 clean sheets for the club as well. Meanwhile, in France, Lyon were expected to finish in fourth place, but they have done a little bit better than that, finishing a comfortable second. They are still quite a bit behind PSG, but I think that has to be expected. They have managed 82 goals throughout the season and have created 163 chances. Defensively, they've been pretty solid as well, conceding 29 goals and keeping 18 clean sheets in the process. Unfortunately, there are no trophies for the team as they're beaten by PSG in the final of the Coupe de France and didn't have any continental football this season. Still, this simulated season is a vast improvement on last year's 8th place finish. Let's head over to Germany now and RB Leipzig before we see how the two English teams did with this tactic. Leipzig were predicted to finish 3rd this season and they have done better than that, but they are still miles behind Bayern Munich. I mean, it's not even close. However, they have managed to win the DFB Pokal, so at least there is some silverware in the cabinet. Leipzig managed 64 goals with this tactic, which is a lot less than the previous two teams we've looked at. Although, with 163 chances created, the tactic is certainly helping them perform to the same level, just looks like these chances aren't being converted. Defensively then, Leipzig concede 26 goals, only three shy of being the best in the league, and manage 18 clean sheets. Now though, let's turn our attention to our two English teams who have had very different results with this tactic. Wolves were predicted to finish 7th in the league this season, but using this tactic they have ended up finishing 13th. They were actually in the relegation zone for a few weeks of the season as well. So what went wrong? Let's dive into the numbers. In terms of goals, Wolves managed to score 59, the lowest of any of the teams using this tactic so far. They also didn't create as many chances, with 120 compared to 160 plus for the other teams. Defensively, this tactic hasn't worked at all in the Premier League with Wolves conceding 64 goals and only managing six clean sheets all season. Unsurprisingly there isn't much success in the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup either. So what do we think the problem is here? Is this simply due to Wolves not being quite at the same level as the likes of Liverpool, Manchester City and company or do we think this tactic just doesn't work in the Premier League? Let me know down in the comments below. Our other English team Plymouth however have had some some great success with this tactic. At the start of the season, FM22 predicted they would finish down in 12th. 
Instead, they are way up in second, winning promotion to the championship and only narrowly missing out on winning the league by two points. They managed 84 goals during their league campaign, the best in the league, and were also the best at creating chances with an impressive 197, some way above Bolton in second place with 135. Defensively, they looked pretty solid as well, conceding 34 goals and keeping 21 clean sheets on their way to promotion. It's a bit disappointing for them to have no silverware to show for all this but I'm sure Plymouth fans would be very happy with the results this season. So what does all of this mean in terms of our ranking for the tactic? Well we can see here we have a lovely Excel spreadsheet that allows us to allocate points based on performance in each category and provide a rating for the tactic. Is this a little over the top? Maybe, but if you play Football Manager and you don't like an Excel spreadsheet, then there might be something wrong with you. After all the points have been added up, the average total amount is 40.6. What does this mean? Honestly, I'm not sure yet. The problem is right now, there's nothing to compare the tactic to. But as I do more of these videos, I think it will start to become clear which is our best tactic for FM22. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have a tactic you want to see me use on the channel, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. Until next time though guys, thank you very much for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.